Now that we've created your Google account, go ahead and get logged in. The next thing we need to do is to create your Google site or digital or e-portfolio. For this example, I'm logged into Gmail as Emily Grace Rodriguez, a demo student. We need to find the word sites on the top menu bar. You have many options for many different Google products, but sites is not one that I'm seeing up here right now. You can choose more and look through this list. If you still don't see it like I do, choose even more. All right, Google has categorized its different products and tools based on uh, what type of tool it is. We're going to go down to the home and office tools right here and find sites. As you can see, sites right now is on the right hand column. So I'm going to click sites. And I've set up several examples um, for previous video tutorials. So I've got a few different um, examples here. Uh, if you've never done this before, you're not going to see any sites listed uh, unless someone who has a Google site has shared one with you. Uh, that means that we need to create one from scratch. So I'm going to go ahead and click this red create button here. Okay, we have several different options to set up our Google site. Let's take a look at each one of them. The first one is to select a template to use. A word of caution on templates. Templates are fantastic if you already know how to use Google Sites. And the reason I say that is because if you look here at some of the different examples, you can see that they come pre-populated with text and images, and in some cases, video. and a lot of that stuff you're going to need to replace with your own uh, information. If you don't know how to use Google Sites, you're not going to be able to do it quickly um, and effectively. So the best option for people who are not familiar with Google Sites is to avoid using a template. But once you get familiar with it, um, I will tell you to please come in here and look. You'll see many different options. So I'm going to choose Browse the Gallery for more. And you can see over on the left-hand column under public, I have several different options uh, for categories for templates. Uh, one of those is schools and education, and you can come in here and see examples of different portfolios. Again, these have been customized um, based on the creator, uh, and they can be used for many different purposes, uh, but I recommend getting um, a foundation and using Google Sites before you get something like this. Uh, another um, kind of problem I think with the templates is that a lot of them have documents already um, included with the template just to show how a document can be embedded in that website. And when you choose to use that template, you're putting all those documents, including images, actually in your own Google Drive. So you don't wanna mess with, with that right now. Um, we're gonna keep it a little more simple. So I'm gonna choose cancel. And I'm going to leave blank template uh, highlighted. All right, the next thing we do is name the site. So this is Emily Grace's digital portfolio. So I'm going to name it Emily, um, we'll do Emily R's since her last name is Rodriguez, and then do digital portfolio. Okay. Don't use last names if you are a student uh, creating a digital portfolio, if you are a young student creating a digital portfolio. Uh, if you are older and you want to go ahead and put your, your full name here, uh, maybe when applying for college, for example, uh, you know, that might be okay. Um, but for, for many people, you don't really need your whole name. So I'm going to leave that at just Emily R's digital portfolio. And as you can see, Google automatically took what I wrote in the name your site box and created a URL, okay, a uniform resource locator. It's like the, the link where you can go to get uh, to this particular website. Um, each URL is unique. You can't have two that are the same. Um, so hopefully this right here is going to be um, available for us. Okay, so Emily R's digital portfolio. Something I do want to note um, is that it's a lot of students kind of come in here and they do something like this. And for the purposes of a digital portfolio, we want it to look a little bit more professional. So we're going to do um, 
initial caps, meaning the first letter of each word is capitalized. And make sure you have that correct punctuation in here where you have the period after the last initial and then the apostrophe. Okay. Uh, the next option is select a theme. If you choose the drop down arrow, you'll get many, many different themes. Unfortunately, we can't at this point preview them uh, full screen. So we're going to have to check one and then I'll show you guys um, later in this video how to change it if we choose one that let's say we don't really like. Okay, so I'm just going to start with something fairly simple. So I will do rounders to get started. Okay, uh, you do have more options here. Um, you can do a site description for your portfolio. Um, I don't think it's necessary to do a site description. Site description is more useful if you're creating like a business site, something that's going to be um, completely open and public on the web and you want Google, uh, Google search engine to find it pretty quickly. They'll use the site description um, to, to find it and to move it up in the search ranks when people search for your stuff. It's really, like I said, not necessary for a digital portfolio that's not going to be um, out there for everyone in the world to, to see. It's going to be shared selectively um, or the link will be given out to those who need it. OK, so I'm going to um, close out more options. Uh, there was a checkbox down here, too. If you noticed, um, we don't need to check that for the portfolios. The last thing we have to do is to fill in the CAPTCHA code. So this is called a CAPTCHA code. And basically all this does is to prove to Google that we are not these automated computer robots that are kind of going through and, and randomly filling in forms and creating uh, Google sites that we are indeed uh, people. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put this in and I'm terrible with the CAPTCHA codes, but I'm pretty sure I got this one correct. Um, so we'll see how that goes. All right. So I've got all my information filled out and I'm going to choose the red create button at the top. OK, so something happened. It didn't create the site. I've got please retype the code here, but I'm going to go through and just make sure that I didn't get any other errors um, when I tried to create the site. So let me scroll back through. And it looks like my theme is selected. OK, I didn't get anything here. So let me create. I must have just gotten the CAPTCHA code wrong. All right. So something else happened. And, and this is good. I, I want you guys to see that. Um, basically, it was saying, um, let me see if I can get that pull up again. The location you have chosen is not available. And that means that somebody else already has that URL. Well, if you remembered, I had a few test sites when I went into my create site. And actually, it was kind of like a little trick trick. Um, question. I actually already have a, a site with this uh, exact URL that I've used in another example. So I knew that this didn't work, but chances are um, when you put yours in, if you don't have a very unique name, if there are lots of people with your same last name or first name, then you're probably going to run into problems uh, like this. So I just want to show you a couple of other options. Instead of digital portfolio, uh, you can say uh, DP. Um, I think I've already used this one to you. Um, so I'm going to do, let me just do Emily's DP and see what happens here. So make sure that CAPTCHA code is still in there and it is. So I did Emily's DP and notice that it's okay if the URL is not the exact same up here. We have flexibility in what we name our site. Google just takes what we name our site and tries to create a URL with it. And we can go back and, and change, um, change each one of these. Okay. So I'm going to choose create. And it's still not available. Um, so Emily Grace Rodriguez, Emily GR's DP. And you might have to do this several times, okay? Uh, simply because, like I said, each uh, website has a unique URL. There's only one of them. So if we have the same name as somebody else's, you're not going to get it. All right. Um, I think I might already have this one, do you? I have an idea. Emily Grace's DP. Notice it says creating site up here in the top middle. Yay, that worked. Okay. And notice up here at the top, the URL is uh, what I just set it at, Emily Grace's DP. Okay. All right. So I told you I'd show you how to change the, the theme. We're not working with templates. We're working with themes. So if I want to change this theme, what do I do? I choose more. And then manage site. 
And then in Manage Site, over on the far left-hand side, I have Site Layout. I also have Colors and Fonts. Um, we're going to just leave it at, um, and Themes, obviously, is a choice. I'm going to go to Themes. If you want to go back later and play with Colors and Fonts, you can. Um, but for the purposes of moving along, I'm just going to go ahead and click Themes. And the theme that I'm going to switch it to is going to be Terra Ruby. So I can preview this. Okay, sure, that works. Okay, and I'm going to choose Save. And to get back to my portfolio, uh, notice it says your changes have been saved. I'm going to use this back arrow. Okay, don't use this one, use this one. All right, so now my portfolio is all set up. Um, the, the last thing and the, probably the most important thing I want to touch base on right here and we'll um, We'll talk about it again at the end of the digital portfolio series if you're if you're uh, finished or when you finish is the sharing settings so we've got to share this so that it's private at this point right now when i hover over share by default it's what it's public on the web well one i'm not done with it and two i don't want everybody in the world knowing my business right now so i'm going to share and then I'm going to change it here. So it says public on the web. Anyone on the internet can find and view. Let's go ahead and click change. And then I'm going to keep mine private. And when I have it private, it says only people explicitly granted permission can access. Sign in is required. And another option we have is anyone with the link. Now, at some point, if you're doing the digital e-portfolios, you'll want to change it to anyone with the link. So you can send that link out to your teachers or if you're using it to apply for college, uh, to admissions officers at your college. Uh, but for right now, while we're creating it, I think it's best to keep it private. And then when you click save, you have the option here to add people. So if you wanted to add like your parents or a teacher, uh, you could go ahead and do that. And then here you can choose uh, can view, can edit, or is owner. Obviously you're the owner right now, but if you ever needed to change ownership, uh, you would change this to is owner. Um, if I like for students, my students to allow me to edit. So I'm gonna choose can edit uh, for this. And then I would just put in um, like a teacher's name and email, or email address. And notice you can notify that person, parent or teacher via email and add a message. Okay, so I'm gonna, um, I don't need to do anything. So I'm gonna click cancel here and then use this back arrow to go back. And now I have created my digital portfolio and shared it appropriately. We are now ready for the next step, which is editing the site and page layout. Thanks for watching.